Manston Airport was trialled today as a lorry park to see how traffic could be managed in the event of no deal. 88 lorries and one refuse collection truck did two trial runs to Dover and back. Some hauliers said it was a waste of time. In the Commons, the Labour leader said much the same. The government is fooling nobody. These shambolic preparations are too little too late. The reality is, Mr Speaker, there is no majority in this House to support no deal. In recent days, they've started dredging Ramsgate Harbour so it can take ferries and large cargo ships if Dover is clogged up with a backlog of shipping. It's all prompted a cross-party letter to Theresa May from some 200 MPs demanding she rules out no deal. Jack and I are neighbouring constituencies in the West Midlands and we've been meeting together once a week as a group because of our concern about the job losses in the manufacturing sector that are already affecting our constituencies. And just before Christmas we decided that we needed to give expression to the unified view that we have that we can't afford to crash out of the EU without a deal. Hilary Benn. Hilary Benn is part of another cross-party push to stop no deal. Along with other MPs, he's putting down amendments, hoping to stop the government implementing no-deal provisions without parliamentary backing. Could I urge the government to take at least one decision in the national interest now, which is to rule out the disaster that a no-deal Brexit would be for this country? The core point with, with uh, ruling out no deal is that the House has to be for something rather than simply to agree what it is against. Theresa May launching the 10-year NHS strategy in Liverpool said she was still hoping new assurances from the EU might help her to get backing for her alternative to no deal. We're continuing to work on further assurances, on further undertakings from the European Union in relation to the concern that's been expressed by parliamentarians. Number 10 aides had hoped Tory MPs getting away from Westminster for Christmas might grind down hostility to her deal. I think that may have been what they were hoping, but I, I don't see any sign of that from myself or from my colleagues. Talking to people in the constituency, talking to my colleagues of a similar view, I think, uh, as the phrase goes, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Why do I say that? Firstly, because the Prime Minister has brought back nothing uh, of any substance from Brussels. We were led to believe before Christmas she might. It looks as if she hasn't. That's the first thing. Secondly, the DUP... The government were really trying hard to get on board. Nigel Dodds, their Westminster leader, made crystal clear at the weekend they're still not going to support the deal. The Prime Minister's hoping that the EU might yet provide some assurances that help MPs change to her side. The unknown at this stage is how many people that persuades. If there's something which the DUP feel that they can live with, I think that makes a significant difference. I think if one or two prominent Brexiteers even reluctantly come on board and say, actually, you know, it's not what I would have liked, it's full of flaws, but nonetheless we need to get this um, sort of stricken aeroplane properly landed now, then I think the dominoes will start to fall. If the Prime Minister came up with something that the DUP found acceptable and their MPs came in behind uh, the Prime Minister's deal, that would have quite an influence on you, wouldn't it? That would have quite an influence on me and other colleagues, and we'd need to look at that and discuss that very seriously. No wonder she's working on them so hard. Uh, no wonder, but uh, she does need to actually listen to them, and they have very clear views, they've been very clear about it. So far, she's not been able to reassure them, or people like me. Tonight, one of two drinks receptions to which all Tory MPs and DUP MPs and their partners have been invited. A bonding exercise to remind them they're all meant to be on the same side. Though you might never have guessed it. So, has anything really changed? You can certainly say there's a new level of activity amongst those people, cross-party efforts to try and stop no deal, and you feel that amongst those MPs engaged in those sorts of projects, they think that Brexit at the moment is a kind of runaway train. There has been a law passed that says we leave on the 29th of March, and they think uh, that that train will career to its destination, deal or no deal, and they want to stop that. They're trying to find all sorts of things they can throw onto the track to stop that happening. Some of them just want to stop Brexit, but an awful lot of them just want to stop no deal. And it's not clear yet whether they've found heavy enough gear, as it were, to throw on the tracks to stop that happening. Uh, the Prime Minister as well, 
that's something that's changed. She's now uh, talking fairly openly about the assurances and clarifications uh, uh, that she's trying to get from the EU, and it's emerging that she's hoping there could be a document, a letter, something with legal weight to it, in which the EU says we, Britain, will leave the backstop by a certain date and move into a new relationship by that date, say, at the end of 2021. Would that be enough to change opinion? You have to say, talking to MPs, the signs are not there. If the uh, ice plates are creaking under the surface, they are doing it very, very quietly and imperceptibly at the moment. One Tory MP I spoke to today, uh, I was asking him if anything had changed. And he said, well, I have to say, when I look back a few weeks just before we went away for Christmas, it was a lot more acrimonious than it is now. Well, they've been sharing a building for about half a day and they're meant to be in the same party. So I'm not sure that's a very good omen. It's New Year. Good cheer for you. Thank you, Gary. So the government is still determined to get its version of Brexit through the Commons. But at the same time, ministers say they've got to prepare for all eventualities. As part of that today, the government had a trial run of what it calls Operation Brock. It's planned to avoid lorry chaos in Kent if there is no deal. But the test was branded a pointless farce after fewer than 100 trucks took part. Our business editor, Siobhan Kennedy, has been with the lorry drivers today. Trucks at dawn. This a planned tailback as the lorries roll into this disused airfield for Britain's first major no-deal dress rehearsal. 150 trucks were due to turn up. In the end, just over half that did. But some 4,000 may find themselves holed up here as a crisis measure to ease congestion in the event of a no deal. Shortly before 8am, drivers huddled together for a Brexit briefing before making the 20-mile dry run from Manston in North Kent down to Dover. With the rest of its fleet crisscrossing the channel, local haulage firm Minters sent its removal vans to take part in the Brexit convoy. Once you've got them marshalled, then you can control it. But isn't that the whole point about no deal? You can't marshal real life. No, but hopefully it won't be for too long. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, there's going to be chaos. It, 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 there's going to be an element of chaos, but because we don't know the amount of trade. And that matters when some of your business, like his, is critical refrigerated medicines on their way to the continent. If, if we've got to do customs and we have pharmaceuticals just in time, temperature controlled, then you're going from, you know, potentially a two hour wait for uh, customs documentation to possibly, I don't know, two days. To avoid that potential gridlock, the government's simulation, codenamed Operation Brock, saw batches of 25 trucks staggered at a time, wending their way through the smaller back roads towards the port. We're just a few miles outside Dover where they've been stacking up what lorries they have managed to get for the trial today ahead of their approach down into Dover. Fair enough to say the traffic has been light and the operation has run smoothly. But remember, this is just 83 trucks out of what many say would be thousands that would be backed up in the event of a real no deal. And the operation, of course, has been highly organised and managed. And this crucial fact, not a single one of these lorries will actually enter the port in Dover for customs checks, where many say the real problems are expected. In the end, 89 trucks made it down to Dover and down to reality. While the lorries today conveniently turned tail for the run back to Manston, under a no deal, all of them instead would need to clear customs before leaving the UK. The controlling of vehicles is the easy part. It's actually getting the paper process of customs. That's critical. And that, I can tell, is the bit that's worrying you. Oh, yeah. And customs sources we spoke to today agreed. One saying he simply didn't see how today's operations could in any way be described as a success because they weren't a true reflection of what would happen here at Dover on day one of a no deal. An opportunity, he said, to show not just how to keep freight moving, but also how they would be processed by customs agents here, once again overlooked. Criticisms over customs, but also over today's choice of location from Kent MPs. Well, I think the whole idea of using Manson Airport as a, as a routing on the way to the port of Dover is not a great idea. It's an airport which is uh, out of the way, so it's hard to explain where it is to lorry drivers, many of whom are from overseas, 
and don't speak English terribly well. Was there any point to today? The government will obviously claim it's been a success, there was little traffic, it seemed to run pretty smoothly. Well, with 89 lorries, it's hard for it to be a, a failure. By midday, it was all over. Each driver, £550, the richer. They've done their job, but has this no-deal Brexit rehearsal done the same? Well, Siobhan joins me now from Ramsgate Harbour. I mean, some Conservative MPs have called this whole thing a farce. One Tory peer said it made him want to weep. What has the reaction been generally? Has it been useful? Well, Cathy, the consensus here seems to be that it was better late than never, but the drivers really do think it was too little too late. The government will say this has been a success. They've learned something about the traffic flows, the pinch points, but the drivers frankly say, I could have told you that yesterday without the need for this elaborate exercise. The question here is one of scale. They managed to muster 89 of the 150 trucks we expected. But can you really scale that up to the 4,000 that could be holed up at Manston? Would it all run as smoothly? We simply don't know. What we got today, Cathy, was a real sense of frustration from the drivers. They were happy that something was being done to address their issues, but they say that the exercise was really addressing the symptoms of the problem, not the cause. The cause being the thousands of extra customs checks that will be needed at Dover, for which the government doesn't seem to have any plan. And Cathy, for any type of dress rehearsal. Well, we've been talking about the roads. You've been on the roads today. We're here at the port, which forms another part in the whole emergency scenario, doesn't it? But the operation to dredge this, I mean, that's been ongoing today. You've seen the dredger out. But the whole business of hiring this um, ferry company to su ferry supplies in an emergency, that's been mired in choppy waters again, hasn't it? It has. Well, ever since Seaborne Freight got announced that it had the contract it has been in choppy waters they continue today it plans to run the service from over there four or five hours over to Ostend in Belgium well today the mayor of Ostend had a press conference and he had this to say I quote him here that starting a service in March between the two ports is simply he said impossible there is no agreement with Ramsgate or Ostend speaking of seaborne freight he was there there's no bank guarantee and as we know already Cathy no ships he wants certainty, he says. He wants clarity. Interestingly, the government's still standing by Seaborne Freight and is confident that they will deliver that service. I'm not sure too many other people are. And well, welcome back to Ramsgate in Kent, where today preparations for possible border delays in the event of a no-deal Brexit took the form of truckers practising using an airport as a giant car park. Well, joining me now are Ramsgate councillor Peter Campbell, local community representative John Davis, and Kent Highways manager Toby Howe. Toby, let's start with you. I mean, was today's exercise any more than a rather pointless waste of money and time? It was far more than that. It was planned really to look at how we could get freight to leave Manston, join the traffic, and actually travel down to a holding point before it actually gets down to Dover. So you only had 89 taking part? Yeah, I mean, the number really isn't the issue here. It's really to actually get a quantity at any one go, because should Manston be used for many, many vehicles, we will only be releasing so many at a time. So we might release 25 at a time, 50 at a time. So what we were looking at today was the impact that that would have on the road network, how quickly they can release from the port, from the from the airport even, all the way down to the port. So that was the critical, what we were looking at. And it was a great success. It today. was a success, really, yes. Peter Campbell, success, prudent planning, just what you'd expect a government to be doing. Well, it's not how I put it, I'll be honest with you. I think it's just too little, too late. 89 lorries going backwards and forwards, when Dover actually has a, a turnaround of about 10,000 lorries a day. Where are the customs are going to be? Well, I mean, I, I can just, just just a disaster. Nothing's been done. Two years to negotiate a deal. There's no deal. Is a deal going to be done or not? Are we going to be in Brexit, out of Brexit? What's going to happen? Nobody knows. Well, Toby how you know because you're doing the planning on the ground. <coughs> what will the scale of disruption be here in Kent if there is no deal or if there is any deal? Really, it depends on that quantity, as you say, on what level that deal is, what the impact is on the port. But in 2015, the M20 was used for Operation Stack and it caused chaos because that road was totally blocked. So what the Department for Transport are looking at is other alternatives now. So Manston at the moment isn't used for anything, so it's an ideal place for holding areas. What we've got to look at is the timing to make sure that freight can get to the port of Dover. And that's what we've been monitoring today, the release rate, how many trucks could be on that bit of road without actually causing issues to the rest of the planet and the surrounding area. 
John Davis, aren't people worrying about the, the deal? Aren't they all sort of scaremongering, do-mongering, as Boris Johnson, the former foreign secretary, um, suggested today? I mean, he said no deal is actually closest to what most people voted for, particularly in this part of Kent, actually. No, they didn't. Um, I think if that's actually exactly what he said, I'd have to agree with that, because at the end of the day, although a deal and with the safeguards would be very important, as uh, I think was being discussed earlier, the, the Northern Irish MPs are not particularly concerned about this backstop issue, and the backstop seems to be the, the, stumb the main stumbling block in, a, in getting a deal. Um, in the event of no solution to that, then ultimately, as we head towards, towards the Brexit deadline date, that leaves us with one alternative, and that is no deal. Peter Campbell, I mean, actually, in this part of Kent, you've got many UKIP councillors sharing the council with you. True. Strongly pro-Brexit, no deal is actually perfectly fine for them. Well, I'm more concerned with the impact it's going to have on Ramsgate. And if there's going to be ferries in Ramsgate, if there's going to be ferries in Ramsgate, the lorries that are going to have to come through Ramsgate town is going to cause enormous environmental impact on my residents here in Ramsgate that they do not want and they do not deserve. So, Have you got a plan for that, diverting the lorries out of Ramsgate Town Centre? Yes, because they won't be using Ramsgate Town Centre, they will be using the tunnel and then onto the Thanet Way, so that does not take the traffic through the town centre. Really Unless sure? the tunnel's closed, and then they have to come down through the town centre, through, past a little tiny little roundabout at the bottom there, and through the cafe society that we've <laughs> taken many years to build up in Ramsgate itself. John Davis, shouldn't you be embracing the dam busters spirit and seeing the upside for Ramsgate? Extra business, the port open once again. In this community, you're probably better off calling it the Dunkirk spirit as much as the dam busters spirit. Very true. Um, <laughs> however, whilst that is very much our attitude, there's a lot of questions that don't add up when it comes to the time frame available to bring these ferries in, whether those vessels exist. We have been campaigning for a prolonged period of time for due diligence to be done on the company concerned because we still do not believe an, an industry Freight advice. Yeah. I mean, the government says it has done due diligence on that and that the dredging will be done within weeks, by March the 29th, certainly. We, we would, as a community, I think it's fair to say, we, we would welcome any initiative that was viable and sustainable and put an end to the massive losses that, that, that we have been subsidising on that port. The questions remain as to whether this is a feasible and viable uh, situation. In addition to that, the number of vessels and movements that are being discussed do not necessarily make the port of Ramsgate viable again, which means that this, con this community will ne then continue to subsidise the situation. It is enormously environmentally unfriendly. This, this town is not built to have this amount of lorries coming through. There were talk of 3,600 lorries a day. Absolutely ridiculous. The, 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 the towelbacks will be down the M2 all the way to Ashford, if that's the case. Well, let me ask Toby how to respond to that. Again, by using the roads that are there, the network of roads that are there, the Thanet Way was designed to suit Thanet to get through to the port. The tunnel was built for that. So, as I say, it would be only on very, very minor occasions, if that tunnel happened to be closed for an incident, that traffic would have to come through. But the vast majority of time, that traffic will use the roads that it's designed to use. We'll just